Hello, everybody. Today's date is Friday, May 17th. This is Jeffrey Harris, and this is the 411 Wrestling Interviews Podcast. And for today's interview, we have the great Mike Kanellis, WWE superstar, wrestled all over the world, held titles all over the world, and now he is on the 205 Live roster. Uh, Mike, how are you doing today? I'm good, man. Uh, I just had my birthday yesterday, so uh, I officially feel feel old. Uh, I think my gray hairs are coming in more than ever. So, but I actually feel good. I'm 34, but I feel like I'm 24, so I think that's a plus. Uh, happy belated birthday for you, and uh, just thank you for talking to us on on your birthday week. And you know, you have dad priorities, family priorities. So thanks for taking the time, man. Of course, man. I appreciate you guys having me on. Okay, um, so now you're on 205 Live. Uh, you had that crazy no DQ match with uh, Akira Tozawa last week. Uh, man, what a matchup that was. Uh, so how, I, I guess, how did you like uh, working with Akira Tozawa right now? Uh, honestly, I love that. It's been my, my, the, my favorite thing I've done so far since I've been uh, at WWE. Jeez, going, going on two years. Um, it's we've never wrestled each other, believe it or not. Our paths have crossed on the independents and probably elsewhere. Um, but we actually never even wrestled each other until the matches we had at WWE. And um, we just had we had really good chemistry. I don't know what it was. Uh, I think we just played off well with each other, and uh, we were always just constantly on the same page. And I think you can tell. Um, I don't know how many wrestlers you've talked to, but I think they can all uh, say the same thing that. You get in there with someone, and like instantly, you kind of get a feel of whether it's going to work or it's not going to work. And I felt like with Tozawa, um, it just worked. And then this last match, it was kind of my way of like, you know, I told I told some of the agents and I told some of the writers, I was like, I really want this match. This is the match that I want because I have a lot to prove. And so I feel like what I set out to prove, I did, and uh, I was really happy with it. Really happy with it, actually. I hope you're feeling okay. That top rope Rana spot <laughs> off the top into a table on the floor was nuts. So I hope that was that was that's got to be up there in some of the craziest bumps I've ever seen. So first of all, thank you for that because it was an amazing <laughs> visual, and I hope and I hope and secondly, I hope you're doing okay. No, you know what's funny is I'm actually that was probably. Um, you know, the, the least painful part of the match, believe it or not. Uh, probably the craziest part, but uh, I'll tell you what's funny is, the for me, the scary, it, this, this part didn't actually hurt that much, but the scariest part of the match for me was when he put the trash can over my head and uh, then hit me with the tope because you can't see him coming. Right. So you're literally just standing there like, oh crap, oh crap, oh crap. And I was trying to like, I was trying to listen to see, because, you know, you can hear the ring making noise, so I was trying to listen and see as it, it, as he was getting closer if I could hear the ring get louder. But the crowd the crowd noise just masked that all out, so I was just like, oh, crap, oh, crap. And then all of a sudden, you just get hit. You just you go with it. So uh, the table spot was fine. The, the trash can spot scared the living crap out of me. That's why you guys are the, are the best you are uh, at what you do. So... It's great that we have you. We've got you back on TV. You're on uh, the 205 Live roster now. Uh, can you tell us at all how that came about, uh, getting you put on 205 Live? Yeah, you know, it was honestly, it was one of those things where I was doing nothing. Like, I just, I debuted with Money in the Bank uh, two years ago, and then it, it just, it, it flatlined. Everything just flatlined, and then before we could even go and, and, and teach ideas or do anything like that, we we found out Maria was pregnant. So she had to come off the road. And then a lot of what we got signed off of was, you know, uh, us as a package deal. And so it kind of like every everything we could have built off of that just kind of stopped. Um, and no fault of anyone. It's just, that's life. That's how it works. And, you know, and then I started doing stuff by myself and, nothing was clicking and we just weren't doing anything and, and you know no ideas were being thrown around um and so finally after you know pitching ideas to writers and, and, and trying to talk to Vince and and then you know finally you know, I had a good conversation with with uh with Triple H and he was like what do you, what would you think about 205 
And uh, I was like, well, his first question was, can you beat 205? And uh, I was like, yes, I, I, just, uh, I am actually under 205, believe, believe it or not. And, uh, and so he was like, what do you think? And I was like, honestly, man, whatever. I just want to work. I came here to work, and I just want to work. And that's what I've always said since day one. I just, I just want to work. And he's like, well, I think you could, you could get a good opportunity. He's like, are you willing to do it? And I was like, if I can work, I will do whatever you ask for me. I just want to work. And uh, so they did. And, you know, things kind of started off slow on 205. But I feel like now it's starting to pick up. And it's such a fun brand to be on because we get a lot of – we get a lot of leeway. We get a lot of, like, we can uh, have a lot of, like, creative control of what we want. They give us, uh, like, almost 15 to 20 minutes every match, which you never get on Raw or SmackDown. So it's, it's, it's just a lot of fun if you really just want to wrestle. I think it's one of the most underrated groups of talent out there because, I mean, to tune into that show and just get you and Tozawa just beating the hell out of each other for, like, a good... <laughs> A good 60 minutes, I think. I mean, that was impressive. So I think to have you on 205 Live, I think it's a great move, and I'm excited to see you on there. So Yeah, man, I'm, I'm super excited. I've enjoyed everything I've done, and, like, you know, they've just – and, and they, they've just had so much talent on it. And they just keep bringing up more guys and putting more talent on it. Like Oni Larkin, like he's awesome. I can't wait to get in the ring with him. So it's just – honestly, like if you're one of those pure – wrestling fans then this is a show to watch in my opinion do you think you still have unfinished business with uh tozawa or are you aiming for bigger fish like uh tony niece and the cruiserweight title i'll tell you what i don't know if i have unfinished business i would love to get back in the ring with him again i would love to go like an, like an hour with tozawa just give us the whole time slot of 205 Give us a no DQ, anything. See what we can do. Uh, hell, put us on money in the bank. I don't care. I would love to do that. But as of right now, uh, after two years of being in WWE, my goal is a, a title. So if that means Tony Nese, if that means somewhere else in WWE, I don't care. I just, I think it's time. I'm, I'm, uh, it's time for uh, a, a title, I think. Now, uh, Tony Nese will, will be facing Daivaria later this uh, weekend. Uh, for the Cruiserweight Championship. Will you be watching that match closely? Oh, absolutely. And honestly, I bet it steals the show. Uh, and that's what the 205 guys do every time. From the time that Buddy Murphy was the champ or Cedric. Like, that's just every every pay-per-view, everyone's like, oh, the 205 match, whether it's pre-show or on the show, uh, it always steals the show. So, like, I expect this one to be no different. Now... Now we have, even though you are on 205 Live, we have seen superstars turn over from 205 Live uh, to Raw and SmackDown, such as Cedric Alexander and Buddy Mur Murphy most recently during the Superstar Shakeup. Do you ever think down the line, like, I would like to be on Raw or SmackDown at some point? Yeah, you know, honestly, who wouldn't? I mean, those are, those are the, the, the two top shows. I mean, regardless of what you're a fan of, you have to be a realist, and the two top shows are Raw SmackDown. That's where the, the top guy, quote unquote, top guys are put. That's where the WrestleMania main events come from. Um, that's where the you know the guys who are in the Money in the Bank matches come from. So it's like, who wouldn't want to be on there? Uh, I started on SmackDown. I got to skip NXT, which I, people always ask me, "Is that do you regret that?" And I I don't because only a handful of us ever got to do that, regardless of whether my my WWE start got off you know, on that footing or not, I, I get to wear that like a badge of honor. But, you know, I started on SmackDown. I got drafted or traded or whatever we're doing now to Raw. And I didn't do much on Raw. Now I'm on 205. I'd love to prove that, you know, I can make it back there. I mean, but it's like, I'm at the point in my career where I feel like I spent, uh, I spent like almost four years being addicted to drugs and wasted those four years. And now I'm clean and I'm healthy. And like, I say this to my wife all the time. I want to prove that I didn't screw those four years up and that I'm actually, I want to be considered one of the top wrestlers in the world. And I know some people might hear that and be like, oh God, no, never. That's awful. But I honestly think I could do it because I had a buddy tell me the other day, which really kind of uh, stuck, you know, hit home with me. He's like, dude, think about this. You got signed to WWE, you know, and they, the work they saw was while you were addicted to drugs. He's like, think about what you can do now when you're not. And I was like, wow, that, that's really true. And it kind of lit a fire under my butt to be like, I want to prove 
that I can't actually be up there with, with who everyone considers the best wrestlers in the world. Now, I mean, since you did mention it, I mean, I think it, I was so impressed with, you know, you telling your story about, you know, your addiction to opioids and uh, just laying it all bare in, in front of everyone. W was that difficult to come forward and just come clean with the world about what you were going through? You know, it's, it's, it's interesting because it's, it wasn't an easy decision, but honestly, the, to me, the harder decision was, was coming clean to my wife and my family because those are the people that I, 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 I basically lied to most of that time period. And so that was, that was honestly um, the most difficult uh, decision or the most difficult thing I had to do. And then I realized, like, we, in wrestling in general, the wrestling industry, it can have such a negative connotation to it. And there's so many negative stories. I wanted to use my voice and my platform to bring some sort of positive light to be, you know, I didn't want the, the correlation between wrestling and drug abuse and wrestling. I, I wanted a positive thing. I wanted people to see, because the guys I work with now are not like that anymore. It's just a different time. It's not like that at all. And I wanted people to see that we're all family men now. We're all, fa like, we're all family men and women. We all have kids. We all, uh, you know, we all live healthy lifestyles. And to me, it was like, this is an important story to get out because I have a voice I have a platform, you know, and with my social media following, I can use this to help people that might just be like, oh, well, if Mike went through it, I can go through it, you know? And I've had people tweet me and be like, "You're the, the message you put out or the Instagram you put out got a conversation between me and my wife, and now I'm going to rehab tomorrow, and I'm just like... Holy crap! Like this, this is this is bigger than my career. This is bigger than wrestling. Uh, it's just it's using my name and my platform for uh, a more positive influence. I think uh, I definitely agree with that. But I think you also shed a light on a greater problem: just how dangerous opioids can be. Because I mean, a lot of these are prescription drugs and things that doctors supposedly prescribed to us so we're so we get better so if we're sick we get better so i think that's an important part of the story as well and i, and I appreciate you bringing that to light because I, I mean i think i think it's important that people know about that how just because just because they come from a doctor they're prescribed they're, they can still be very dangerous and very addictive to your body you know yeah man and like i was just like that i mean people just assume it's it's safe because, like you said, the doctor gives it to you, and you're like, "Oh, that's fine." Oh, uh, I mean, mine started when I dislocated my knee, and then I was like, "Oh, that's that's incredibly painful." So here's here's this to take care of it, and then it's like, "Oh, okay, my knee's feeling better, but well, crap, my, my back hurts now from that match." So, oh, you know, maybe I'll take a couple more, and before you know it, it just you spiral out of control. But you never, you, I think we justify it to ourselves. Because we're like, oh, well, the doctor gave it to us, so there's no way my doctor would steer me clear or steer me in the wrong direction, right. you know? And so all of a sudden, you're just like, but the doctor prescribed it for your knee, and now you're taking it because you have a, a headache or you have a, you know, a, a pulled muscle from a match, and then all of a sudden, you're just, you're, you just can't stop. And, like, I think it's, especially nowadays with everything that's going on in this country, I think it's in very important to shed some light and I want to be like like I said I want people to look at me and be like if he can do it and now he can raise a family and travel the road and do all this stuff I can do it too and that's kind of what my message is I want people to use me and I, I have people message me and I try to reach out to as many people as I can and tell them to direct message me you know because sometimes just telling someone or sometimes just having a voice that you can you know bounce stuff off of it, it helps so much and I have to say, like, right now, you, you look really good, man. Uh, physically, I think you're in some of the best shape of your career, and you're looking really fast and, and crisp out there. Do you feel good? Oh, I feel I feel 10 times. I, I, I've never felt as good as I've felt right now. And I can, I can, like, I watch back some of my matches, and then I watch myself now, and I'm like, oh, jeez, I move way better. I, 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 I get up better. I fall down better. Like, I feel like everything I do in the ring is just better. Um I feel like I'm, I'm more flexible. And that's just, you know, I'm just putting in the time now. I'm, I'm preparing myself. I think I took a lot for granted. Uh, and, you know, to be brutally honest, I think I took a lot of 
my runs before in different companies for granted. And, and I always say this, getting to WWE and falling flat on my face was the best thing that ever happened to me because it really made me be like, no, get your ass in gear. You know, you you have an opportunity here now that you worked 16 years for and you may never get it again. So get your ass in gear. And like, that's all I've been doing. I mean, I've been studying tapes. I've been working my ass off in the gym. I've just been going, going, going because... Like I said, I have a point to prove, and, I, and that point is to prove whether it's on 205, Raw, SmackDown, uh, any company that's out there, I want to be the best wrestler in the world. Now, with the upcoming move for SmackDown Live uh, to Fox, that's going to make, it could potentially make SmackDown hotter than ever. So, at that time, do you think Raw would be the, the hotter show to move to, or do you think, would you rather be on SmackDown if you had a preference? You know what? I don't. I don't think I'd have a preference at all. I mean, when I started, I started on SmackDown, so SmackDown's always had a special place in my heart. Um, but I, I don't think I'd have a preference because I think it's just a matter. Every every show you're on is just a matter of what you make it. And uh, me and Maria always talk about. She she always says uh, that Two Hundred Five Live is the A show because she's on it, and that's the mentality you have to have. Right. Like if you're on NXT UK. NXT UK is the A show because you're on it, or 205 Live, or or uh, NXT, or any of those shows is the A show because you're on it. That's the confidence you need to bring. It's not being cocky, it's just understanding uh, what you bring to the table and telling everyone, no, this is what I bring to the table. All right, so I this might be a bit of a, a weird question to ask you, but since I have you on the line, i got to ask you. WWE right. Hall of Famer Jim Ross, he was recently on Busted Open Radio and he talked about WWE offering some very significantly lucrative contracts to undercard talents. One in particular who wasn't even on TV was offered a $500,000 contract just to keep them off the streets and like away from the competition. <coughs> AEW. <coughs> um, have you heard anything like that going on in WWE right now? You know, I... Uh I can't say that I haven't or I have, but what I will tell you is that I know that competition is good for anything. And competition always, always, always brings out the best in any business. And I, for one, having been doing this for a very, very long time, and when I started, it was uh, uh, it was not the best time to get into wrestling. Uh, I am super excited to see what what the wrestling business is going to look like uh, five years from now, hell, even two years from now, because I, I just think, uh, I think it's going to be awesome. I honestly do. Like, it's just, I have so many friends that I get to text every other day and be like, congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. And coming from the era when I started, and it was literally like, if you were an indie guy, you were blacklisted everywhere you go. It's, it's, it's awesome now. There's just, there's tons of places, even guys that don't sign contracts are making, I, you know, pretty decent money just hustling out on the independent scene. So, you know, I think for me, it's like the possibilities are endless. So and I'm just excited and I'm excited to see what's going to happen with me in, in five years, hell, even two years, because I'm just, it, it's just an awesome time in wrestling. I think you can, you can attest to that being a big fan. Like oh, yeah. I'm just as big a fan as anybody. And I watch every single, I watch every single company because I just love wrestling. So I'm just excited to see what's going to happen. Now, has there been any buzz backstage in your opinion over this uh, AEW TNT announcement that just uh, came out this week? Oh, I mean, oh well, uh, to be totally honest, I haven't been backstage since everything's been announced uh, because they were over in the UK right. uh, and I've been home. Uh, so the last time I was actually on the road was for my match against Tazala. Um, so, you know, uh, uh, to be totally honest, I, I just haven't been backstage. So I, I mean, you'd have to live under a rock not to know anything. But uh, yeah, I haven't. <laughs> so I honestly don't know. I've been kind of I've been busy with dad duty. But it definitely sounds like like the competitive juices are fl are flowing everywhere a little bit, don't you think? Oh, absolutely. That's just good for business everywhere. Like you can't, you know. I don't care what anyone says. If they tell you it's bad for business, they're 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 lying. It's it, it just it brings out the best in people. Like you don't. That's why you have. I mean, some of the greatest football players, like Tom Brady, they are just so competitive. That's what makes them great. 
like uh, some of the greatest best like LeBron James is great because he's obsessed with being competitive and so there's no there's no way that doesn't make anyone better now are, are you still close with your former kingdom stable mate Adam Cole I am yes I'm close with uh, Adam Cole I'm close with Matt Taven I'm close with all those guys uh, how do you how do you think Adam Cole's been doing on NXT with his uh, recent run and that great oh, match he had with Johnny Gargano He's, he's fantastic, man. I mean, honestly, if he's not, he will be a universal champ or WWE champ at some point. He's just, I've honestly, uh, me and him have kind of uh, paralleled careers, and I said this in other interviews, but we got each other signed in Ring of Honor uh, by doing dark matches against each other. Uh, then we got signed in Ring of Honor. Then we both went to WWE tryouts at the same time. We both got told no at that same WWE tryout. Um then we both went back to Ring of Honor, and then we kind of we went to New Japan together, um, and then we kind of veered off when I went to Impact, and he stayed at Ring of Honor. But then I came to WWE and shortly, uh, shortly after he followed suit in WWE, and uh, I just honestly, from the minute I met him when we started doing those dark matches, I've had the world of him, and he's only gotten better. Um, Honestly, if it was me, and obviously I don't run WWE or NXT, but I would, I would strap any company to the back of that guy, and he would just take it to the moon. Honestly, he's he's just he's phenomenal. Not only is he great in the ring, great on the microphone, but he's a better person. And I don't know how many people know that because you know people only see what they see on TV. But he's just one of those dudes that you're like, yep, that's a, that's a, that's a good dude right there. Uh, is there a memory with the Kingdom Stable that really sticks out in your mind to you? Like, man, we, you know, this is really working. Uh, I don't know if there's anything in particular, uh, but it's just, it, it was one of those things, uh, whether it was the original incarnation, like me and Cole and Matt Hardy, um, we had a tag match uh, against the Briscoes. It was me and Matt Hardy versus the Briscoes in Nashville, and we did a uh, Falls County where no DQ or something like that. And it was it was just a crazy match, and, and just the chemistry I had with Matt Hardy. I was like, oh, this is really good. Um, but then you know, once me and Cole started going to Japan, and then me and Taven started going to Japan. Uh, and then we won the IWGP tag belts. I was like, oh, wow, we really have something here. Like, they're, they're taking us seriously, which for a long time, we weren't taken seriously. And I wasn't taken seriously in ROH. And, like, I was always just kind of like, oh, I was just there. And then, uh, then I became like, oh, I'm Jim, just Jim Cornette's boy. And then, uh, then I was, oh, I'm just there because of Maria. But then once, like, the kingdom started, I felt like I really built something on my own. And that, uh, the kingdom is, will always hold a special place in my heart. Yeah, that's a that's a great um, memory right there. So, and just a couple more things, uh, Mike, and I'll sure, let you man. get on with your day. Uh, so, what we, what do you think is your best advice for people uh, who are dealing with you know any type of addiction uh, to get help or to kind of you know try and get past it? You know what, honestly. Uh I think the best thing to do is just uh, don't be afraid to talk to somebody and don't think you're going to get fixed overnight. I think the hardest thing that so many people go through is you say to yourself, well, it took me this long to get addicted, so I can't imagine how long it's going to take me to to get over this. And it's so cliche that this whole, you know, everyone always says one day at a time, one day at a time. But if you if you just take it in baby steps, eventually it snowballs into something bigger. Because if we just look at the end game, and, and this is where the whole process over outcome thing came for me, because we so... We always just look at like what our goal is and what our end game is. And when you look at that, it seems so incredibly far away and it seems so incredibly unattainable. But if you just focus on what you're doing day to day to get to that end game, whether it's a goal you've set for yourself in life or a job or a relationship or whatever, or whether it's trying to get clean from an addiction, you focus on what you need to do that day. So for me, if it's if it's if I want to be considered the best wrestler in the world, what do I need to do today? All right, I'm not on the road with WWE today. So what can I do to better myself today? Okay, I can get up, I can go to the gym, I can email ideas to this person, this person, and that person. While I'm not at the gym, I can sit down or I can walk on the treadmill and I can watch this match, I can watch that match. Hell, I have 
the WWE Network is on every single wrestling streaming service you could possibly imagine. I'm going to watch this match. I'll text someone and be like, hey, do you have any good matches you can send me? And that's, that's what I can focus on today. And if you're addicted to drugs or anything like that, you can sit there and say, okay, yesterday was a good day. What can I do today to make it a better day? Okay, I can focus on this. I can focus on that. I can focus on this. I'm going to reach out to my best friend and tell him I'm struggling today. He can talk to me for a couple of hours, and then I can move on to the next thing. And the next thing might be, all right, uh, what can I do to occupy my time? All right, I can go do this. I can go to the gym. I can go to this spin class. I can go get lunch. Like It's just taking those baby steps every single day and not focusing on the fact that, you know, you want to get to this goal, which might be two or three years down the road. Um, it's just focus on the process every single day of getting to where you want to go. The WWE Mattel Elite Mike Kanellis action figure. What can you tell me? When's this going to happen? Uh, I have no idea. I've been trying so hard here. I've never had an action figure. And, like, I'm so mad. I just want an action figure that I can give to my daughter and be like, hey, look, this is your dad. So she's not playing with everyone else's action figure. Next time I, oh. next time I see Bill McKenna, I'm going to grill him on this. Don't you Please worry. Do. <laughs> There's no one to give me an answer. Everyone just passes the buck on. I want to know, damn it. <laughs> All right, and uh, and just uh, last thing, Mike, if you have any social plugs, uh, we can watch you on two hundred five live. But if you have any plugs or any, or anything uh, you want to share with the fans, uh, please go right ahead. Yeah, please. Like, I put up videos on my Instagram all the time. It's uh, at the real Michael Bennett. Um, I put up videos and, and I tweet all the time. I do Q and A's because I love to keep in touch with my fans on uh, Twitter. That's at the real Mike Bennett. So follow me there. I have a YouTube page where I try to put up my motivational videos on. It's uh, it's the uh, process over outcome. Just type it in the search bar and you can find it. Um, yeah, just just you know follow me on that. Um, and please, my wife has just started a uh, wedding event planning business. Um, so uh, it's called one. It's on Instagram at Wonderland Events. So if you look it up, she's, uh, she does really cool stuff. She's got her store opening in Ottawa, Illinois, on May twenty fifth. Um, you know, it's her love, and so I just I support her in everything she does, and she's really really good at it. Um, so please go see my wife if you're ever in Ottawa or you want to check out Cool Antiques or get your wedding planned by her. We've traveled to different states to help plan people's weddings, which is always kind of interesting. Uh, so, um, yeah, just give her a shout out. She's got emails and stuff on there, so please go follow her. All right, Mazel Tov. And uh, congrats uh, to you, your wife, uh, your young daughter. Um, you're doing you're doing great things, Mike. Keep up the great work, and uh, just thank you for this interview. I really appreciate this time. No, thanks for having me, man. I appreciate it. And again, uh, you know, uh, anytime you want me back, I'll be glad to talk about anything oh, well, you want. And uh, I just appreciate you reaching out. Thanks well, a lot. Well, thank you, Mike. And once again, happy belated birthday, and I and I hope you guys enjoy yourselves. And thank you for listening to the Four One One Wrestling Podcast. Signing out. <laughs>